Our scripture reading today is one that I'm sure you're familiar with from the 20th chapter of the Gospel of John. This morning I'll be reading from the NIV translation. Beginning then in the first verse. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white where Jesus' body had been, one at the head, the other at the foot. <coughs> They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They've taken away my Lord, she said, and I don't know where they put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabbi which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them that I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Now may the Lord add his blessing to the reading and to the hearing of his word. Easter is the best time to recount and to recall the foundational elements of our faith. For without these, our faith is worthless. The passage we've read from John in the 20th chapter serves as a popular text for the day, as does Matthew 28, Mark 16, and Luke 24. It recollects the first experiences of our risen Lord. The resurrection of Jesus is the keystone of the church. Indeed, the whole case for Jesus as being the one and only way, truth, and life rests on the fact of his resurrection. If Christ has not been raised, the Apostle Paul writes to the church in Corinth, then our preaching is in vain, as is your faith. That's why apologetics, or the Christian theological discipline of intellectually being able to understand the resurrection has been devoted to proving it. And as someone has said, there's more evidence for the resurrection of Jesus than there is for the birth of George Washington. There are several things we need to remember when we think about this day. The first is, the church is the witness to Christ's resurrection. The first witness for the resurrection is the church itself. And we are the church, which is consistently focused on and consistently referred to the resurrection of Jesus as the foundation of its praise, of its proclamation, of its prayer life, of its living ever since 32 AD. And Sunday, 
and what it represents is also the witness to his resurrection. Most of us may not know that prior to that time, most people worked six days a week. And I know some of you still do. But in those days, you didn't have a weekend. You had a day off. And the day of rest was the Sabbath day. It's what we call Saturday. But the second witness for the resurrection is Sunday itself. Sunday is the Christian day of worship. And its history can also be traced back to that moment in 32 AD. The church shifted its entire worship calendar from the Jewish Sabbath to Sunday because Jesus rose from the dead on the first day of the week. Remembering the early church was predominantly Jewish, only an event as powerful as a resurrection could cause a change in an entire belief system's day of worship. But the third thing we remember is the New Testament serves as a witness to the resurrection. The third witness is 27 testimonies in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John to the fact of the resurrection. 27. Not one page of the New Testament could ever have been printed had Jesus not have conquered death. And then the final issue is that the disciples are witnesses to his resurrection. If we're honest and we look closely, we'll admit that something must have happened that transformed the disciples from a band of cowering and cowardly individuals to men of courage and conviction. And that's something we know as being the resurrection. Martin Luther King Jr. said, if you have nothing to die for, you have nothing to live for. The disciples went from denying him to being willing to face the tests of torture and martyrdom for him because they were convinced of his resurrection, which ensured their desire for eternal life. Look closely at what happened to their life after the resurrection. You know what happened to those 12 disciples? Have you ever thought about it? For their faith, Andrew was crucified. Bartholomew was beaten and then crucified. James, the son of Alphaeus, was stoned to death. James, the son of Zebedee, was beheaded. John was boiled in oil. And when that failed, he was exiled for his faith. And he was the only disciple to die of old age. Judas, not Judas Iscariot, but the other Judas, was stoned to death. Matthew was speared to death. Peter was crucified upside down. Philip was crucified. Simon was crucified. Thomas was speared to death. Matthias was stoned to death. There's only one reason these Jews were willing to suffer such a terrible persecution for the name of Christ because they knew they had seen the resurrected Lord and they believed that that truth was worth dying for. The final point of the resurrection rests with us, the church in the 21st century, because we believers are witness to the resurrection that we know by the empowerment of God's Spirit that lives within us. Jesus is alive in very real and specific ways to all who invite Him into their hearts. To receive Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. It's like the old hymn. You ask me how I know He lives? He lives within my heart. Or as Mary announced, for I have seen the Lord. Those who have received Christ discover a constant and abundant supply providing them evidence of their faith when they seek to be faithful to the one who is most faithful to them. God's provisions are not always material, they are not always worldly, but His Spirit for those who believe is always present 
in such a profound way that we seek his presence, his assurance, and his comforting guidance through every journey, through every blessing, through every trial or encounter that we experience with our lives. This was the experience of Christ's first disciples. This was the experience of the early church. And this can be our experience in the here and now. When we discover a way to truly know what it is to say the message of Easter, that we can proclaim with the truth of our life that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and is Lord. Let us pray. Our Lord, this truth draws us to this place at this time. And this truth has sustained us through many journeys, some that were pleasant and some that were not. But Lord, we hold fast to this belief because of our knowledge of You. By the witness and the testimony of Your Spirit that speaks to us each day and reminds us not only of the truths of the past, but of Your abiding presence each and every moment of our life. Lord, enable us to take this good news and celebrate it. Celebrate it in ways that are pleasing to you. Celebrate it in ways that share with others. Celebrate it in ways that leads to our days of seeing you in glory. Lord, enable us to be your words to a world that needs to see your resurrection, both now and in the days to come. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Friends, I invite you to turn with me to our last song. <clears throat>